you must have wondered at times in your life what you're doing here. Uh, I think all of us have come to points in our life where we wonder why, why am I here? What is the purpose of this whole thing? I feel that it's meaningless. And of course that occurs at different times. Sometimes when we're just bored with our own jobs and our own day-to-day -day existence, sometimes at crises in our lives when people die whom we love, Sometimes when we're in real despair over finances or over our own futures, but probably every one of us has felt that at times. We felt uh, there's no point in it all, and then for a moment we've pondered, I wonder what the point of it is. And then, of course, it's interesting, life itself has a way of uh, blowing those thoughts away and we carry on for another 50 years. But finally, of course, we will be highly interested in what the purpose of it all was. And so that's what we're discussing on this program each day. And we have been for several months. And what we have been sharing, of course, is that the real purpose of your existence is that you would actually get to know your maker, the being that made you, that created you. Now, don't turn the radio off. Don't, don't, don't say, oh, yeah, more of that religious stuff. No, I think there are many of us that are tired of just the old jargon and fed up with the old cliches and don't want to hear any more of just religion, religion, or Christianity, Christianity. We want to know what reality is. And we're anxious to know what the point of this whole thing is. So do stay with us, stay with me, and listen for goodness sake. What we're saying is the things that we have been given here, like the sunset and the sunrise and the blue sky, are not here by chance. Okay, big deal if there is such a thing as evolution. Maybe there is. Maybe there is evolution. Maybe there's a lev evolution across the species as well as within the species. But if there is, somebody somewhere had to originate that plan. I mean, that didn't come about by chance. You don't get the ordered organization of our blood circulation and the ordered design of the seasons following one another year after year the way they do. You don't get the regular orbiting of the planets round each other as we have in our Milky Way without somebody somewhere planning something because we know in our own human lives where there's no conscious intellectual design chaos results so there has to be somebody behind it all and of course what we're saying is that there was a remarkable being that lived in the first century of our era that actually showed that it was possible to go through death and come back to life again. And that being was the man known as Jesus. And if you study his life from an intellectual viewpoint, instead of just preoccupied with either rejecting him because he's religious or accepting him because he's religious, then you begin to discover that he was more than a human being and he did have powers over nature and powers over disease and that he is regarded as the foremost ethical teacher that ever lived in the world by those who believe that he was more than a man and those who don't believe he was more than a man and that this man, Jesus, did make some sense in the things he said to us about the meaning of life. And so we've been discussing the kinds of things he told us and of course he explained many things himself and he also pointed out many things to his followers. And as a general uh, guide to us, he said, you know, the things that were written in what he called the law and the prophets and what we, of course, call the Old Testament part of our Bible, he said, those things are true. They were written for your education and for your information. And uh, nothing of them will pass away. Now, I explain some things to you more clearly, but the things that were written back there were written so that you would understand the meaning of life better. And so he reinforced in us belief in the bits of the Old Testament that explain the purpose and the meaning that is behind life. 
And that's what we have been discussing. And you remember we've been talking about the accounts in the early parts of the Old Testament about the creation of mankind so that we would begin to understand our own natures better so that you would be able to understand your own personality better. And you know, if you respond and say, ah, oh, that's all myth, no, it isn't. There are bits of it that are metaphorical. There are bits of it that obviously indicate they're to be treated metaphorically and as pictures. But there are other bits that indicate that they're to be taken as history. And if you say, oh, well, now, how did anybody know what was happening there? I mean, was there some little guy sitting in the corner of the Garden of Eden with a paper and pad taking uh, little shorthand notes? No, no, obviously there wasn't. Obviously there probably wasn't writing as far as the first man was concerned. But you know what happened. The creator of the universe who made it all happen explained to the first men that lived in our world explained what he had done and why he had done it. That's how we ever got the kind of account of creation that we have in Genesis. So don't let's treat the guys back there as dumb or stupid or idiotic or not as bright as we are. They were, they were. They knew where these accounts came from. They came from the creator of the universe who revealed them to the first man that ever lived and he passed the story on down to other people. And if you say, oh now, they can't pass stories on like that unless there's right sure they can. A lot of our old nursery rhymes, a lot of our old poems come from men who learned hundreds and hundreds of lines of ballads and passed them on down to us. You know how much you have memorized without even trying to memorize it of popular songs. You know how many songs you know that you've never actually learned deliberately. So of course it is very reasonable and very probable and very easy to conceive that what we have in the Old Testament, especially in the early books, actually was revealed by the creator of the universe to the first men who ever lived. And of course, the creator of the universe explained to these men how he had at the very beginning, you remember, and if you have a Bible sometime, you should look it up, how he said at the very beginning, before the world was ever really in its full blossoming stage, he said, it's recorded in Genesis 1, 26, then God said, let us make man in in our image. And that was God turning around to his son Jesus. His son Jesus lived before the world was made and saying to him, look, uh, my son, let's make man in our image. And uh, that's how we were made. That's why we're not just super apes, you know. We're not just super monkeys. We're actually people that are made in the image of our own creator. And the way God made us was in a threefold kind of consciousness such as he has. For instance, if you look back at that early chapter, Genesis 2 and verse 7, it says, Then the Lord God made man or formed man of dust from the ground. Hey, that is, he took up some ordinary dust and he made us into bodies. And that's what our body is made of. And that's why, you know, it returns exactly to that. That's what our body decays into uh, if you wait long enough after it's in the grave, it returns to dust. And that's why we say that, you know, out of dust you were made into dust you will return. So God made, first of all, our bodies. And then that verse says, he breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. Now, what that word for breath is, is ruach. And it's a Hebrew word that means not only air or breath or wind, but it means spirit. And so the creator of our universe put into you some of his own spirit. Now, that's why you feel at times you should do better than you do. That's it, you know? That's where that comes from. You may often wonder, why do I find it so easy to lose my temper, and yet I still keep thinking I should keep my temper? Why do I find it so easy to be selfish, and yet I still feel I should be unselfish? Why do all of us human beings in this universe find it easier to fight and squabble and grab for ourselves and yet we still keep on saying we shouldn't be like that? Well, it's because the Creator breathed into us his spirit. There's something of a spirit in us, in our conscience, that makes us want to live better than we know. It's because there's part of his spirit in us that we feel we were made to live forever. Don't you feel that? Don't you? You somehow feel... Look, it will go on. I don't know why. 
I'm not even terribly religious, but I feel this will go on. It's because the Creator's Spirit is in you. There's something of the Creator in you. So let's talk a little more tomorrow about some of the other implications of the fact that we were made in His image with some of His spirit.